Uh, we have Ben in Austin. Hello? Hey, guys. How are y'all doing? Pretty good. good. How are you? Uh, pretty good. Hey, uh, I was just wondering, um, did y'all hear about uh, Christopher Hitchens being diagnosed with uh, throat cancer? Yes, I have. I uh, hope he gets better. Yeah, I, I was kind of wondering, I, I kind of saw some uh, hypocrisy there when, uh, like, Billy Graham died. You know, y'all, you guys, especially Matt, had said some pretty uh, scandalous things about him. And uh, now well, that... Uh, the, the question is, were they true? With, uh, <laughs> Richard, uh, or excuse me, it was Christopher. Um, you know, I hear some uh, some of the theists saying some scandalous things about that. And, there, are, uh, there are scandalous things to be said about him. That's sure. for can, sure. Can you give an example? <laughs> I mean, I, I wasn't on the show where Matt talked about Billy Graham. Can you? Re I'm sure I listened to it, but can you remind me what specifically he said? Oh, uh, like good riddance. Uh, I can't pick out word for word exactly what he said, but pretty much that was kind of the feel. Okay, I would not be surprised if people said the same thing about Richard. I mean, uh, Christopher, Christopher Hitchens. Hitchens. I know that they feel that way about him. Hmm. Well, you know, honestly, myself, when that was said about Billy Graham, you know, I didn't care. I thought that was kind of funny, but people right. are saying that about uh, Christopher Hitchens, and I'm offended. And you know, it's kind of uh, a little bit of hypocrisy. You know, is that okay to be hypocritical? Should there be a double standard when it's my guys versus their guys? Well, I mean, and it might be human nature. It's I not. Yeah, I mean, it's not so much whether it's okay. I mean, it's gonna happen no matter what. People yeah. have their preferences, and uh, you know, it might piss me off if uh, people talk badly about. Richard Dawkins or Christopher Hitchens, although, you know, well, I, I talk bad about them sometimes, too, if they say something I don't like. No, we, I, don't, we, I wouldn't say good riddance if he died, because I, right. I, I like the guy, yeah. mostly. I think the most important thing is, is, is what's being said true, and if, if something is being said or made up or whatever, um, like very often uh, when someone dies who was a uh, you know questionable believer or non-believer, there's these uh, these myths that get circulated that oh there was a deathbed confession and they they gave their life to Jesus at the last yeah. moment and all that and and that's just really annoying to me uh, to have uh, to, it's a it's a way of stealing credit through lies of, of this person's work or whatever their their beliefs or their stance or whatever they stood for. Um, and, and I just really hate that sort of thing. Um, so if, if, if what is being said is the truth, I, I don't think there, there can be any complaint, right? Now, I, I remember an editorial being written, and I can't remember their details right now, but it was something like, you know, it's, you know, God is, being, is doing a great thing by giving Christopher Hitchens cancer because it's going to bring him... To you know, Jesus. It's going to make him realize the error of his ways. Yeah. And I think... Uh, P.Z. Myers has a term for people who write like that. It's, he calls them contemptible ghouls <laughs> because they are sor sort of using the opportunity to uh, to capitalize on somebody else's pain. Capitalize on somebody yeah. else's pain, whereas I think saying good riddance about Billy Graham, it's kind of a jerky thing to say, but... Uh, um, <laughs> Uh, but that doesn't mean that Matt can't say it, um, and and he may even be justified in saying that. Um, but it's a whole nother category to sort of <laughs> uh, to to sort of lie about the outcome of this sort of thing. To come up with something similar to the to the uh, Darwin Lady Hope story, where you say, "Oh, he actually converted on his deathbed," when he didn't. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, they said the same thing about Gould, didn't they? Oh, it's it's a I, I, popular it's, thing. It's it's been used a lot. Yeah, the idea of an atheist uh, vindicating you, uh, vindicating your beliefs by converting them to the last at the last minute in secret to one eyewitness, uh, is a very popular theme in Christian fiction. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> And uh, just to say Christianity. I'm not saying it can't happen, and I would say, in fact, that even if Christopher Hitchens, you know, at the last moment of his life said, oh my God, I, how could I have been so blind all along? Jesus is the, you know, Jesus is the one true God. That doesn't mean that atheists would take him seriously, because I don't think that atheists do or should bring one guy, you know, elevate one guy as the spokesperson, as the one right. arbiter of we're, truth. We're not followers. We, we come to our own conclusions. Right. There and, isn't and, an atheist pope. And if and, somebody, yeah, if somebody changes their mind, well, maybe they know some facts or maybe they, they're, they're 
made a, made a mistake or whatever. That's that's sort of uh, an indiv that's a separate issue to how we're going to make decisions, right? If that comes, it'll be when I'm very ill, um, when I'm half demented, either by drugs or by pain. I won't have control over what I say. I mention this in case you ever hear a rumor later on. <laughs> <laughs> um, because these things happen and the faithful love to spread these rumors. You know, on his deathbed he finally, well, I can't say that the entity that by then wouldn't be me wouldn't do such a pathetic thing, but I can tell you that not while I'm lucid, no. I could be quite sure of that. So if there is some story that on your deathbed... Don't believe it. Don't believe it. Don't credit it, no. That's right. Yeah, look, at, look at the reaction to Anthony Flew. Right. I mean, Antony Flew is so, seemingly a genuine atheist. case, yeah, yeah. Where, where he actually he what, changed his, his mind when now. he got old. And uh, who jumped all over this story? It wasn't a bunch of atheists converting en masse because they worshipped Antony Flew. <laughs> it was a bunch of Christians saying, see, this just proves that we're right. In right. the atheist community, it was like, wow, what made him think that? But and did, and in my case, Antony who? Yeah, um. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know him, but but the the big irony there is that Anthony Flew converted it, it, to deism and and denied Christianity, but the Christians are promoting it. Oh, we're right, you know. And it's like no, you need to understand what he's talking about. Well, right, so it's gonna, pure propaganda. If you're gonna um, <laughs> buy into Pascal's wager, wouldn't that be mm -hmm. the best time? to, you know, right at the very end, last second. Oh, yeah, hedging your bets. Well, that's yeah, supposedly exactly. what Constantine did, uh, is that he, he decided that it was too risky to convert to Christianity before he was on his deathbed because he might sin. But, and if you convert it at the very end, you get all the, all the goodies, supposedly, <laughs> right? So, right. Well, so it was very, very calculated. Back in the day to get baptized right before you die. Yeah, that's a pretty, pretty common thing, I guess. Right. Jack Chick, one of my favorite Chick tracks, was about the gunslinger who's, you know, this evil mustachioed guy, and he, you know, murders a bunch of people, and then at the end he uh, winds up having a last-minute conversion just like that. Um, and the sheriff, who is presented as a good law-abiding citizen, goes to hell after a snake scares his horse or something. Uh, and, and this is the way things work in the fictional Jack Chick universe. And then at the end of the tract, it says, now get down on your knees and say, I, you know, Jesus come into my heart. So, you know, I read a Jack Chick tract once and I said, okay, got down on my knees, said, Jesus, come into my heart. Got back up, continued doing an atheist show. <laughs> so I'm covered. <laughs> as far as Pascal's well, did, wager did goes, I can be an atheist all I want. Right then, or did he want you to kill a bunch of people and then go down on your knees? Well, that wasn't the advice in the tract. No. Well, then <laughs> yeah. it's unclear. I think he should, uh, you know, be a little clearer in his message. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I think it's all pretty silly, so I, I, I wouldn't have even done that, Russell. But, but well, I mean, I, I figure as far as Pascal's wager, we just wager make the goes, audience aware that this was a tongue-in-cheek thing. Right? Yeah, it was tongue-in-cheek. <laughs> yeah, okay. At no point in this, we don't take it that seriously. <laughs> yeah, at no point in this did I actually, you know, think that this was doing anything right. except for a laugh. Right. Anyway. Okay, Ben. All anything right. else? Uh, no, that's it. Thank you, sir. Okay, thanks a lot for calling. Thanks. Bye. -bye.